Maximilian Maria Kolbe Polish Maximilian Maria Kolbe Max M Il Jan Mar the 8th of January 1894 to the 14th of August 1941 was a Polish conventual Franciscan friar who volunteered to die in place of a stranger in the German death camp of Auschwitz located in German occupied Poland during World War II he had been active in promoting the veneration of the Immaculate Virgin Mary, founding and supervising the monastery of Nipikolanau near Warsaw, operating an amateur radio station SP3RN, and founding or running several other organizations and publications. Kolbe was canonized on 10 October 1982 by Pope John Paul II, and declared a martyr of charity. He is the patron saint of amateur radio operators, drug addicts, political prisoners, families, journalists, prisoners, and the pro-life movement. John Paul II declared him, "...the patron saint of our difficult century." His feast day is August 14, the day of his death. Due to Colby's efforts to promote consecration and entrustment to Mary, he is known as the Apostle of Consecration to Mary. Biography. <inaudible> <inaudible> Topic. Childhood Maximilian Kolbe was born on 8 January 1894 in Zdunska Wola, in the Kingdom of Poland, which was then part of the Russian Empire. He was the second son of weaver Julius Kolbe and midwife Maria Dabrowska. His father was an ethnic German and his mother was Polish. He had four brothers. Shortly after his birth, his family moved to Pabianis. Kolbe's life was strongly influenced in 1906, when he was 12, by a vision of the Virgin Mary. He later described this incident, That night I asked the Mother of God what was to become of me. Then she came to me holding two crowns, one white, the other red. She asked me if I was willing to accept either of these crowns. The white one meant that I should persevere in purity, and the red that I should become a martyr. I said that I would accept them both. Topic. Franciscan Friar In 1907, Colby and his elder brother Francis joined the Conventual Franciscans. They enrolled at the Conventual Franciscan Minor Seminary in LWOW later that year. In 1910, Colby was allowed to enter the novitiate, where he was given the religious name Maximilian. He professed his first vows in 1911, and final vows in 1914, adopting the additional name of Maria Mary. Colby was sent to Rome in 1912, where he attended the Pontifical Gregorian University. He earned a doctorate in philosophy in 1915 there. From 1915 he continued his studies at the Pontifical University of St. Bonaventure, where he earned a doctorate in theology in 1919 or 1922 sources vary. He was active in the consecration and entrustment to Mary. During his time as a student, he witnessed vehement demonstrations against Pope St. Pius X and Benedict XV in Rome during an anniversary celebration by the Freemasons. According to Colby, they placed the black standard of the Giordano Brunisti under the windows of the Vatican. On this standard the archangel, St. Michael, was depicted lying under the feet of the triumphant Lucifer. At the same time, countless pamphlets were distributed to the people in which the Holy Father i.e., the Pope was attacked shamefully. Soon afterward, on October 16, 1917, Colby organized the Militia Immaculati Army of the Immaculate One, to work for conversion of sinners and enemies of the Catholic Church, specifically the Freemasons, through the intercession of the Virgin Mary. So serious was Colby about this goal that he added to the miraculous medal prayer, O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. And for all those who do not have recourse to thee, especially the Masons and all those recommended to thee. In 1918, Kolbe was ordained a priest. In July 1919 he returned to the Poland, which was newly independent. He was active in promoting the veneration of the Immaculate Virgin Mary. He was strongly opposed to leftist, in particular, communist, movements. From 1919 to 1922, he taught at the Krakow Seminary. Around that time, as well as earlier in Rome, he suffered from tuberculosis, which forced him to take a lengthy leave of absence from his teaching duties. 
TB was generally considered fatal, with rest and good nutrition the best treatment, as antibiotics had not been developed to treat it. In January 1922, Colby founded the monthly periodical Richard's Nipicolonege, Night of the Immaculata, a devotional publication based on French Le Messager du Cœur de Jesus, Messenger of the Heart of Jesus. From 1922 to 1926, he operated a religious publishing press in Grodno. As his activities grew in scope, in 1927 he founded a new conventual Franciscan monastery at Nipikolanau near Warsaw, it became a major religious publishing center. A junior seminary was opened there two years later. Between 1930 and 1936, Colby undertook a series of missions to East Asia. At first, he arrived in Shanghai, China, but failed to gather a following there. Next, he moved to Japan, where by 1931 he founded a monastery at the outskirts of Nagasaki, it later gained a novitiate and a seminary. He started publishing a Japanese edition of The Night of the Immaculata The monastery he founded remains prominent in the Roman Catholic Church in Japan. Colby built the monastery on a mountainside. According to Shinto beliefs, this was not the side best suited to be in harmony with nature. But when the United States dropped the atomic bomb on Nagasaki, Colby's monastery survived because the other side of the mountain took the main force of the blast. In mid 1932, Colby left Japan for Malabar, India, where he founded another monastery. This one closed after a while. Meanwhile, the monastery at Nipikolanau began in his absence to publish the daily newspaper, Meili Genic, the Little Daily, in alliance with the political group, the National Radical Camp. This publication reached a circulation of 137,000, and nearly double that, 225,000 on weekends. Poor health forced Colby to return to Poland in 1936. Two years later, in 1938, he started a radio station at Nipikolanau, the Radio Nipikolanau. He held an amateur radio license, with the call sign SP3RN. Death at Auschwitz After the outbreak of World War II, which started with the invasion of Poland by Germany, Kolbe was one of the few brothers who remained in the monastery, where he organized a temporary hospital. After the town was captured by the Germans, he was briefly arrested by them on 19 September 1939 but released on 8 December. He refused to sign the Deutsche Volkslist, which would have given him rights similar to those of German citizens, in exchange for recognizing his ethnic German ancestry. Upon his release he continued work at his friary, where he and other friars provided shelter to refugees from Greater Poland, including 2,000 Jews whom he hid from German persecution in the Nipikolanau friary. Kolbe received permission to continue publishing religious works, though significantly reduced in scope. The monastery continued to act as a publishing house, issuing a number of anti Nazi German publications. On 17 February 1941, the monastery was shut down by the German authorities. That day, Kolbe and four others were arrested by the German Gestapo and imprisoned in the Paviak prison. On 28 May, he was transferred to Auschwitz as prisoner 16670. Continuing to act as a priest, Colby was subjected to violent harassment, including beating and lashings. Once he was smuggled to a prison hospital by friendly inmates. At the end of July 1941, three prisoners disappeared from the camp, prompting SS Hauptsturmführer Karl Fritsch, the deputy camp commander, to pick ten men to be starved to death in an underground bunker to deter further escape attempts. When one of the selected men, Franciszek Gajovnicek, cried out, My wife! My children! Colby volunteered to take his place, according to an eyewitness, an assistant janitor at that time, in his prison cell, Colby led the prisoners in prayer. Each time the guards checked on him, he was standing or kneeling in the middle of the cell and looking calmly at those who entered. After they had been starved and deprived of water for two weeks, only Colby remained alive. The guards wanted the bunker emptied, so they gave Colby a lethal injection of carbolic acid. Colby is said to have raised his left arm and calmly waited for the deadly injection. He died on August 14. His remains were cremated on 15 August, the feast day of the Assumption of Mary. Canonization On 12 May 1955, Colby was recognized by the Vatican as a servant of God. 
Colby was declared venerable by Pope Paul VI on 30 January 1969, beatified as a confessor of the faith by the same pope in 1971, and canonized as a saint by Pope John Paul II on 10 October 1982. Upon canonization, the pope declared Saint Maximilian Colby as a confessor, and a martyr of charity. The miracles that were used to confirm his beatification were the July 1948 cure of intestinal tuberculosis in Angela Testoni, and in August 1950, the cure of calcification of the arteries, sclerosis of Francis Rainier, both attributed to Colby's intercession by their prayers to him. After his canonization, a feast day for Saint Maximilian Colby was added to the general Roman calendar. He is one of ten 20th-century martyrs who are depicted in statues above the Great West Door of Westminster Abbey, London. Controversies Colby's recognition as a Christian martyr generated some controversy within the Catholic Church. While his self-sacrifice at Auschwitz was considered saintly and heroic, he was not killed out of odium fidei hatred of the faith, but as the result of his act of Christian charity toward another man. Pope Paul VI recognized this distinction at Colby's beatification, naming him a confessor and giving him the unofficial title, Martyr of Charity. Pope John Paul II, however, overruled the commission he had established which agreed with the earlier assessment of heroic charity. John Paul II wanted to make the point that the Nazis' systematic hatred of whole categories of humanity was inherently also a hatred of religious Christian faith. He said that Colby's death equated to earlier examples of religious martyrdom. Colby has been accused of antisemitism. In 1926, in the first issue of the Monthly Night of the Immaculate, Father Colby said he considered Freemasons as an organized clique of fanatical Jews, who want to destroy the Church. Writing in a calendar that the publishing house of his organization, the Militia of the Immaculate, published in an edition of A Million in 1939, Father Colby said, "...atheistic communism seems to rage ever more wildly. Its origin can easily be located in that criminal mafia that calls itself Freemasonry, and the hand that is guiding all that toward a clear goal is international Zionism. Which should not be taken to mean that even among Jews one cannot find good people." Newspapers he published printed articles about topics such as a Zionist plot for world domination. Slovenian sociologist Slavoj Žižek criticized Kolbe's activities as "...writing and organizing mass propaganda for the Catholic Church, with a clear anti-Semitic and anti-Masonic edge." However, a number of writers pointed out that the "...Jewish question played a very minor role in Kolbe's thought and work." On those grounds allegations of Colby's antisemitism have been denounced by Holocaust scholars Daniel L. Schlafly Jr. and Warren Green, among others. Colby's alleged antisemitism was a source of controversy in the 1980s in the aftermath of his canonization. Colby is not recognized by Israel as among the righteous among the nations. During World War II Colby's monastery at Nipikolanau sheltered Jewish refugees. According to testimony of a local, when Jews came to me asking for a piece of bread, I asked Father Maximilian if I could give it to them in good conscience, and he answered me, Yes, it is necessary to do this, because all men are our brothers. Relics First class relics of Colby exist, in the form of hairs from his head and beard, preserved without his knowledge by two friars at Nipikolanau who served as barbers in his friary between 1930 and 1941. Since his beatification in 1971, more than 1,000 such relics have been distributed around the world for public veneration. Second class relics, such as his personal effects, clothing, and liturgical vestments, are preserved in his monastery cell and in a chapel at Nipikolanau, where they may be viewed by visitors. Influence Colby influenced his own order of conventual Franciscan friars, as the Militia Immaculati movement had continued. In recent years new religious and secular institutes have been founded, inspired from this spiritual way. Among these are the missionaries of the Immaculate Mary, Fr. Colby, the Franciscan Friars of Mary Immaculate, and a parallel congregation of religious sisters, and others. The Franciscan Friars of Mary Immaculate are taught basic Polish so they can sing the traditional hymns sung by Colby, in the saint's native tongue, according to the friars. 
Our patron, Saint Maximilian Kolbe, inspires us with his unique Mariology and apostolic mission, which is to bring all souls to the Sacred Heart of Christ through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, Christ's most pure, efficient, and holy instrument of evangelization, especially those most estranged from the Church. Kolbe's views into Marian theology echo today through their influence on Vatican II. His image may be found in churches across Europe and throughout the world. Several churches in Poland are under his patronage, such as the Sanctuary of St. Maximilian in Zadunska Wola or the Church of St. Maximilian Kolbe in Szczecin. A museum, Museum of St. Maximilian Kolbe, there was a man, was opened in Nipikolanau in 1998. In 1963, Rolf Hochhuth published The Deputy, a play significantly influenced by Kolbe's life and dedicated to him. In 2000, the National Conference of Catholic Bishops US designated Marytown, home to a community of conventual Franciscan friars, as the National Shrine of St. Maximilian Kolbe. Marytown is located in Libertyville, Illinois. It features the Kolbe Holocaust exhibit. In 1991, Krzysztof Zanussi released a Polish film about the life of Kolbe. The Polish Senate declared the year 2011 to be the year of Maximilian Kolbe. Topic. Immaculata Prayer Kolbe composed the Immaculata Prayer as a prayer of consecration to the Immaculata, i.e. the Immaculately Conceived Topic. See also Holocaust Theology Peter Fellner Sisters Minor of Mary Immaculate Topic. References Topic. Further reading Rees, Lawrence 2005. Auschwitz, A New History. New York, Public Affairs. ISBN 978-1-58648-357-9 External links Patron Saints Index, St. Maximilian Kolbe Kolbe's Gift, a play by David Gooderson about Kolbe and his self-sacrifice in Auschwitz based on factual evidence and conversations with the late Josef Garlinski. A Man Feared by the 21st Century, St. Maximilian Kolbe from the Starvation Bunker in Auschwitz, a drama by Kazimierz Braun St. Maximilian Kolbe, a popular biography at Catholicism.org Nipikolanau in English Catholic Online, St. Maximilian Kolbe, Catholic Online, Inform Inspiring Night. Street. Maximilian Kolbe website.